Here we go. This will be really interesting because I have never reviewed anything from Gemini before, nor have I seen this turntable rebranded as anything else ever. So this should be very, very interesting. It's a complete all-in-the-box solution, everything you need to play records. This is the Gemini TT900. They call this the modern Bluetooth turntable system. Three-speed turntable, dual 50-watt dynamic stereo speakers, and seamlessly seamless music streaming. A look on the side here. I mean, it looks very attractive. I like the look of it. All-in-one system. Stream music wirelessly from your Bluetooth device. So, okay, we know what it does now. It doesn't transmit. It sounds like it receives Bluetooth, which, you know, for people just starting out, that's a big selling point because they want to be able to kind of enjoy their streaming music too, even though they're getting into vinyl. So let's check it out. All right, large box. Let's see what's inside. This is cool. Like I said, it looks really cool. At least to me it does. Interesting. So the uh, platter and everything is right there. It's already assembled. And this piece on top designed to brace it. Let's go ahead and lift out the turntable. Very lightweight. Okay. That's all right. That's not necessarily a bad thing. All right. Looking in here, we have the speakers. Speaker wire, 45 adapter. I like that it matches. Instruction manual. And then the speakers themselves. So let me go ahead and get these out of the box. Oh, and the power supply. Power supply is down here. Let me get everything out of the box and we'll take a look. I really like that it's something different. You know what I mean? We see a lot of the same stuff in terms of repackaging product from brand to brand and re reutilizing a lot of components and even design elements. All right, speaker, a decent weight to it, wrapped in plastic. Okay, let's get the turntable over here. Obviously, what we're going for with this unit is is this going to be a beginner unit for people that we could recommend or even an intermediary step as they move up from having suitcase players and all-in-one systems would this be a recommended next step up i'm liking this so far it looks cool it's all still packaged but you know so far i'm liking what i'm seeing this is uh pretty lightweight so i'm going to take a stab in the dark here and say that that's probably a plastic platter. Let me go ahead and get the plastic off of everything and we'll take a closer look. Very interesting. We took the outer plastic wrap off, but everything, including the speakers, still have this adhesive cling wrap on them. And they go under the knobs. Isn't that weird? It's kind of strange. I mean, obviously these will just pop right off. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, the grief it like literally goes even around the tone arm assembly so do they expect people to just tear this away i mean i guess it works you can just sort of tear it away from around the knobs i'm guessing that if we take the platter off we'll be able to remove that part of it easier and it's a good excuse to dive under the hood here we go we've got a felt oh my gosh they fooled me oh no okay i was gonna say i thought it for a second there i thought it was part of the platter but no, it is felt platter mat. It's a pretty thin one. I mean, these are this as as felt platter mats go. This is a fairly lightweight one. This is also recessed right here. This will surely be a belt driven turntable. Yep, there is the motor pulley and the belt itself. And we can go ahead and remove that belt just like that. And we can take this clip off. Need a little tool here. I'm going to can you just use a screwdriver. I'm using a file just because I happen to find one sooner. Okay, and, and they usually fly across the room just like that. And then we can lift off the platter. Interesting. Okay. This platter is substantially heavier than I thought it would be. It is plastic, but it is thick plastic, and it has some weight to it. Interesting. Look at this, like, toothed gear around that center hub there. This doesn't have any automatic functionality, so it doesn't do anything. Maybe it's just a design element. Again, this is all new to me. I have never seen this. I have never seen this. This is a hefty plastic platter, probably the heftiest plastic platter ever. Got the finger lifts there, the access point for putting on the belt. Always done in pairs so that the weight is evenly distributed. So yeah, the sub platter, we got the belt on there. Obviously a good belt, brand new. And looking under here, we can see 
that the plastic indeed does go under where the platter was. And we should be able to pull it off easier now. I want to be as careful as possible around the tone arm. Without the platter, surprisingly hefty platter, this is this is probably one of the lightest turntables I have ever, ever seen. It's just a white plastic. So let's go ahead and look at the close-up stuff here. We've got the motor pulley. This will be probably a JYK type of motor, just like I would expect it to. Let's look at the main bearing here. It spins freely, but it doesn't just, you know, keep spinning after you let go. So I think that that'll be adequate. Feels good. Down here, we've got the three speed setting, a pitch control, which is good, and a volume control. I keep saying I've never seen anything like this, and it just continues. So we have a counterbalance, not something that you see oftentimes with a ceramic cartridge, albeit this one is fixed. So I'll be curious what the tracking force is on this unit. We've got a little release. The parts are pretty hefty. I mean, this is a pretty substantial thing. This is a interesting tone arm it's it's hollow underneath it's like a u-shaped plastic so it's completely hollow underneath there and we've got a cueing or a uh, cueing lever the send is very slow and the little lift shelf even has rubber it's coming off a little bit right there let's look at the gimbal see how okay so that is a little loose for sure Will it matter on an entry level unit like this? Hard to say. For a cartridge, we do have the Chuo Denshi clone. And it's really interesting. Look at that little spur at the tip of the cantilever. Very, very interesting. It does have a metal cantilever. It does have a bridge. So it is the higher end variant stylus, which is good. I am assuming this is probably a sapphire tip. I can't quite tell. Maybe a diamond tip. But yeah, there's the cartridge under there. And again, this cartridge needs to track somewhere in the neighborhood of five or six grams. If it's less than that, it's actually going to do damage. So we want to make sure that it is not too light and obviously not too heavy. We don't want it tracking at 10 grams either. It should be right there, five or six grams, nothing more, nothing less. And while we're down in this area here, here's a look underneath that uh, gimbal housing there. It's a lot of white plastic. There's not a whole lot to see. It's very interesting and bizarre. Very cool though. Okay, and working our way from right to left, we do have a power switch. We have the power input. We have a Bluetooth and phonograph switch. So if you wanna go Bluetooth mode, flip it into Bluetooth mode. If you wanna go phonograph mode, flip it into phonograph mode. Speaker tabs, because this does have an amplifier built into it, which is amazing considering how lightweight it is. We do have audio outputs in case you want to connect it to a larger system and then an auto stop switch so you can have this automatically stop playing the record when it gets to the end. So this is somewhere between a fully manual turntable and a semi-automatic. It has the auto stop functionality. Here's the bottom side. We've got four rubberized feet. These are actually pretty nice rubber. There is a little bit of movement to them. They don't really pivot. Looks like there's a speaker enclosure, although there are no speakers in this particular unit, I mean, they're the external speakers. They're not built in right here, but it looks like they could sell a version of this that had built-in speakers, which is interesting. We've got very clearly labeled 45 and 33 speed adjustment. Where's the 78 adjustment? That's probably going to be on the board somewhere. Just now realizing as well that the unit does not have a dust cover. So that's kind of bizarre. There's a little movement. This is feels a little loose right here, but we'll see what it's like when it's in operation. The speakers... There's no specification in the manual about anything. I mean, they give a parts list, they give good instructions, but there's not a lot of specification data. However, the box says that it has dual 50 watt speakers. First question on my mind is, is that a real tweeter? Checked it out. It is indeed a real tweeter. It looks like a silk dome tweeter. And here's the rubber surround. And this is a paper cone for the main driver. You can also see if you look in here, you can see that it does indeed have a real driver for the tweeter, which is good. Because some entry-level systems have decorative tweeters, fake tweeters, but this one does not. The design cues of this are reminding me of sort of this late 70s sort of futuristic space theme. I don't know why that's coming to mind. Very Epcot themed, 
I guess that'd be early 80s. You know what I mean? I just saw this futuristic, you know, Star Trek, the motion picture kind of vibe to it, which I like. I think that's actually very, very cool. Very, very refreshing. All right, guys, let's hook this thing up and give it a listen. Okay, to put it in perspective, I paid $84 for this at Guitar Center. It was on sale. It's normally like $140. So we'll keep that in mind as we evaluate things. We've got the speaker set up. We've got the unit set up. We're going to do a speed test and a tracking force test. Before that, I do want to show the 45 adapter again. It's adequate, but I kind of like these instead. I think these look a lot better. Be curious what you guys think. That one's awesome. This one is awesome as well. I think that those look a lot, a lot better. Okay, let's start with the tracking force. Looking five to six grams. And here we go, lowering the tone arm now. Interesting. I think I've said interesting about 400,000 times. I'm not even going to need to recalibrate the scale because it doesn't peak over five grams. Now, this may be a little bit of a concern. Usually, these track a little too heavy, if anything. Six, seven, eight grams is a bit too much, whereas, like I said, five to six grams is, is ideal. But this is just under five at 4.73. That may be a hair low, so we'll, we'll, we'll listen to it. If it has any tracking errors or is causing any issues, we'll definitely take note of that. But so far, very intriguing how they've put this thing together, and uh, it's certainly unlike anything else we've seen. I keep saying that too, but it is. It just it's very it's very odd in a good way. All right, we've got our stroboscopic disc on here. We will be looking right here initially. This will be thirty three RPM. Let's spin it up and see how accurate the speed is. And it's very fast, very fast. However, I've got that pitch control and it was pegged to the right. So I'm going to move the pitch control until this thing is perfect on speed. Oh, look at that. All right. That's why a pitch control is such an incredible feature. Now, if you wanted to recalibrate it, so perfect speed like this was at the top of that knob, kind of the 12 o'clock position. You could get in there and fiddle with the, the controls on the bottom. I would advise against that because it is very hard to get it, you know, perfected if you're adjusting underneath like that. So yeah, we got perfect speed thanks to our pitch control. Now looking right here in 45 RPM, it is a little bit slow because it's marching to the right. So we're going to increase speed just a hair and we're right on target going up to 78. A little bit of motor noise there at 78. And it is also a little slow, so I'm going to adjust it up or down until it's just perfect. Look at that, guys. Perfect speed with the pitch control. That is awesome. I love to see that. I love the fact that it's got a pitch control. So all you have to literally do is turn this left or right until you get it just about perfect. For 33 RPM, it was right about the 10 o'clock position, so the calibration wasn't too far off. And then all the other adjustments were between 10 and 12 o'clock on this so not too far off if you had to turn it all the way to the left or all the way to the right that would be a little bit more annoying because you wouldn't have any headroom so you'd maybe in that situation want to make adjustments on the bottom to sort of recalibrate the pitch knob but you can be rest assured with this unit that you are getting perfect speed and not only that the consistency looked pretty dead on i didn't see a lot of cogging it looked like it was you know doing a fantastic job so i'm impressed all right let's give this thing a listen this won't be a direct feed. This will be an ambient test because we have speakers. We want to give them a listen. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to disconnect my lavalier and connect the front firing stereo mics. And we'll give this thing an ambient sound test. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the clip, raise the tone arm, and we will spin up our record. A little slippage there because this record is actually bowed a little bit. It's kind of, sort of cupped. So the only point that it's touching... <laughs> Uh, perfectly is right under the label. So the record's not completely flat is what I'm trying to say. But let's give it a listen on these speakers here. Very gentle descent. I love that. All right, moving along a couple different places. Give it a listen. You know where to begin. We can turn this thing around. I see the whole world upside down. Nice. This actually has some punch. 
surprise these little speakers. They feel kind of light and hollow, but they do what they're supposed to, I guess. That's a great thing. This thing drops really slowly, so it'll probably speed up a little bit. Obviously just a first listen, but the speakers sound pretty full, pretty full, a little boxy, but not terrible. Very listenable from what I can tell. You could speed this up by kind of pushing down on the lift shot. <laughs> Distortion is part of the song. Let not your heart be troubled there. Let's listen one more track. You know what? I want to test the Bluetooth out. I want to test it with something that's smooth and has got a lot of bass. And we'll give that a listen because I'm curious, a little bit more curious about these speakers before I say, eh, they're good, they're bad, whatever. Okay, so again, to flip it to Bluetooth mode, switch back here and this light goes blue. Bluetooth mode. Oh, huh. that's interesting. Usually you don't hear a guy's voice. So we're in Bluetooth mode. I see the unit come up as Gemini TT900. Show you here on the iPhone. So we're just going to tap there to connect. Easy as that. Okay, so now that we have connected, we should be able to play some Bluetooth music. Okay, here we go. This is Sneaky Snitch by Kevin McLeod. All right, let's try fluffing a duck. This is a this is pretty much a steal because this thing is dead accurate on speed. It's got very, very minimal wow and flutter. The sound system that you get out of the box is good. It's not mind-blowing, but it's not bad. It is good, it is more than adequate. The sound is rich, the sound is full, which is significant because we're dealing, remember, with that Chuo Denshi cartridge, and those are not known for their warmth and their bass and their rich undertones. They're known as a kind of a harsh, tinny cartridge, especially if the manufacturer has not properly matched impedance. This one is absolutely matched. Phenomenal sound quality for a Chuo Denshi. This is about as good as it gets for a Chuo Denshi. It's good proof that you can get surprisingly good sound out of a ceramic. So as long as you have the diamond needle on there, I'm kind of thinking this one does have the diamond because I really can't see a reddish hue whatsoever, but that's easily upgradable. Like I said before, three for five bucks for a diamond three pack of needle replacements for this. No big deal whatsoever. I do like the styling aesthetic. It's not going to damage your records. No way. Not at 4.73 grams. And I like it. I think it's phenomenal. So Guitar Center, when I bought this was having a sale, 84 bucks, but I think it was a closeout. I don't know if this is being discontinued. I do know that it is on Amazon for like 140, 150. I'll put a link down below if you can't get to a guitar center, you can check it out there. At 150 bucks, that is a bit more, but considering they're getting, and I'm assuming you're buying this as a gift for somebody, maybe for yourself, assuming that person is getting a, a turntable that is a reasonable starting point towards good sound quality, I think that that's you know, worth it, absolutely. So let me know down in the comments below what you think, what you know about Gemini, and what you think about this review, this turntable. I'd be curious to get your thoughts.